what do you identify as major hurdles in current education systems that prevent the effective integration of soft skill training and how can these be overcome? So, good afternoon. The hurdles for soft skilling generally emerge from uh, you know, several angles. Uh, some of them could be related to time management or talent academy programs. Others could be related to certain you know, personal hobbies and passions that the people may have. Uh, it could also be originating from a conflicts of interest between what the parents wish to do and what the students wish to do. So I think there are many reasons why there will always be hurdles in the soft skilling aspect of the uh, skills. But I think the way to go and the way to solve that would be to really look for, uh, you know, what are the students really want to do? Uh, are they really going in for things of their choices, things of their passion domain? Or are they being, you know, uh, made to enter into areas which are of not their liking and maybe they don't want to really see that as a great value add. So I think it's, it's that discovery element of uh, the skills uh, which is very important and it needs to start at a very young age. It needs to be brought up uh, uh, to the next level as they start migrating from primary schools to middle schools. And there's a constant search of those so-called X factor skills and areas of passion that students may have uh, and that search has to go on. I think the challenge is in getting that search done or the discovery done. And so therefore, it's a chicken and egg story where you have a, a issue of discovering the right passion, therefore discovering the right skill set that you want to build versus, and then you have suddenly in high school, you are payloaded with so much of work on academic side that uh, literally soft skills take a back seat. So these are some of the challenges of soft skills. In terms of uh, percentage, as you've seen with your experience and having so many international schools, uh, what do you see is the proportion of your students who actually follow the dreams and passion and the skills they have over the time developed, other than just getting into academia and then proceeding with uh, the norms of engineering and you know how it's been in the old times? There have been, uh, there have been uh, significant growth of uh, students who are uh, only focused on academics, but also taking keen interest in other areas of fashion, sports, music, dance, drama, etc. Uh, and we find that that number is slowly increasing. What's interesting is also now the universities are asking for clear evidences of uh, what the students have done during their journeys in school, and that uh, they would like to see evidence of participation, collaboration, leadership, uh, problem solving, uh, and also beyond their academics, they want to see some areas where students have passion. Uh, it could be music, it could be drama, it could be robotics, it could be anything. But I think what the universities are very clear is that we don't want students who are only focused on academics. We want students to have a life. We want students to be able to have a say in what their patients are. and. Uh, that's what I think we believe is the way to go forward and uh, give the opportunities to the students so they can build on these multiple passions that they have and uh, while without diluting any of the academic sense. So which year did you find a huge change in terms of having to adapt to nurturing these uh, skill sets? Uh, I mean, you've had your school for many, many years. so. When did you think the need and did you actually go through hiring people who would actually identify these skill sets? So uh, there are two parts to the question. One, I think which year we found this. I think uh, as we started conversations with various universities, uh, it became very clear that the academics uh, is not the only factor in which universities were selecting students. And uh, so this happened about 15 years back. and. We were able to then reorient our academic programs and school initiatives uh, in order to align with how universities are thinking. Uh, the second aspect of the program is the discovery of these passions and how students really would like to build on these skills uh, lies in the fact that they've spent maximum time in the classrooms and uh, they are spending a lot of time with their teachers and subject teachers. 
So these are natural uh, sources of, uh, you know, uh, where the skills can be developed and the teachers know the students best. So the teachers are the best source of that information. I think what we're trying to do is get that information pieced together so that when they come down to the middle school or the high school, that information is already available to the university counselors and they can kind of appropriate it. So this is a good segue into my next question to you is, how can educational institutions better align their curricula to meet the evolving needs of businesses, especially in terms of soft skill and interpersonal abilities? And I think this is, uh, this is very uh, unique to each country, each of the geographies. Uh, businesses have different requirements, universities have different requirements. And uh, universities are typically aligned with what the markets need. Uh, however, they can always be universities with niche areas of specializations which are sort of emerging but not really a mainstay. I mean, uh, in engineering, for example, civil, electrical, electronics, uh, mechanical used to be the core of engineering many years back. And now we're talking about engineering, you got engineering degrees with business and law embedded in that. Uh, and obviously it means that the business businesses that are requiring engineering graduates, they also want them to be sort of understanding elements of business, but they also want them to be, you know, understanding the elements of law. So there are different ways in which businesses go around asking for these talent pools and universities really, you know, ramp up and they are able to you know, uh, get these programs and initiatives uh, clear, created for them, uh, which would be then met with the industry. So what strategies do you recommend for fostering closer collaboration between educational institutions and the business sector to ensure a well-rounded skill set for students? Uh, I would say uh, the universities and the schools uh, need to work very closely. We work with some universities, but not many. And I think uh, what it really means is that the universities, when they are building their courses in line with the market requirements, uh, either today or 10 years down the line, I think the schools are the ones which generally don't get a sense of where the, where the universities are going. You can only make out from the fact that the programs are coming off. You know, now everybody is talking about artificial intelligence, machine learning, everybody's talking about chat GPT. So universities are immediately you know, aligning themselves with uh, not about why is chat GPT good or bad, but about why should you not be using chat GPT in what you do and how can you use it more effectively. So I think there's a closer cooperation required between the schools and the universities to be able to make sure, uh, or maybe through the academic boards such as the IB and uh, the American boards, where they can actually instruct the schools or they can guide the schools into bringing in those programs which are more relevant to the universities and therefore indirectly relevant to the markets. So how is the Global Schools Foundation addressing the need for both technical qualifications and soft skills in its educational offerings? The soft skills, as we can see, are in many areas. Um, and the uh, reason we say soft skills are uh, various choices are available is because depending on the profile of the students and depending on what uncertainties lie ahead, uh, we, we tend to you know, invite the soft skills, for example. We have programs like Entrepreneurship Bootcamp with uh, certain faculty members of INSEAD. And these boot camps are geared towards giving a sort of a journey and experience of the what is what is to be an entrepreneur, and this is to be done with the various aspects of uh, you know uh, child development, holistic development, and of course personality development, and also leadership development. So when we look at skills, we believe that while technology can play a role in trying to bring together some of these things. However, technology is still a distant away, as well as uh, you know, what the students are required to do as part of soft skilling is really to be as part of what their passion is, what their learning journey expectations are, and also in terms of how they see their profiles being enriched uh, for the university that they're targeting. So we have to go on a unique person by person approach, student by student approach to actually carve that out properly and to be able to guide the students into those soft skilling areas. Uh, but technology can certainly help a, a, 
approach to actually making that journey measurable over a period of time so that uh, data is available as and when uh, the children need to be aware of right they need to you know start wrapping up their skills uh, before the high schools and this will be very helpful helpful in that so as we look to, uh, towards the future what key soft skills do you believe will be most in demand in the global workforce and how are your educational institutions preparing students accordingly well, well there are many soft skills uh, in the in the need or the need of the day uh, i would highlight one particular one which is communication and uh, if you look at communication it is the most important soft skill today that children need to uh, really master upon uh, because a communication can make or break a success story of any product or service so while it's not necessarily important to have uh, to become the great orator but it's important to become a great communicator of the story that you want to tell through your products and services and therefore communication to me is one of the most significant and critical soft skills that everybody should start you know mastering in fact, in Harassis, it's strange that I met a lot of uh, custodians of businesses who own business houses and their children are not following them. And this is a trend that I've seen many years now, uh, people coming in Harassis where the children choose to go on their own, do their own thing, and then pr probably sell their startup and then, then say, okay, maybe now it's time. So do you see that in probably the high school onwards, you see mindset where children want to do their own thing and they are not now dependent or look at the safety zone of the parents' businesses or, uh, you know, generation businesses. Yeah, I think uh, we should see that these alpha generation students, uh, you know, who are parented by millennials uh, are, are a very different lot uh, compared to what we have seen uh, our parents and what we have seen the parents before the millennial age. Uh, there has been a change in mindset in how millennials think. They, their association with, uh, you know, ability to, for example, own a house versus rent a house. They have clear views that renting a house is much more easier. Uh, similarly, the current alpha generation students who are schooling are, are going to come up with very different set of life experiences, schooling experiences, and, and the peer thinking that goes on in their school friends is going to be very different. So it is not a surprise that uh, students of current generation of entrepreneurs are actually ditching their plans to be part of that, but you know actually take something of their own because of, it has created you know in many ways many opportunities have been created, and these opportunities are what this young generation today wants to tap on. So I think it's uh, we have to let them go, have a great try at it, and uh, I'm sure they'll be successful. Great. And before we conclude, I'd love to get a synopsis of a brief synopsis on your journey and where you started, which year and where you are today. And probably in the next five years, where do you see yourself with the foundation? I think uh, the 22 year journey in brief, I would say is uh, that, you know, today we realize education and its paramount uh, importance in building the, the citizens of tomorrow. Um, it is far more important today as compared to even generations back. Uh, and the reason is very simple. Uh, information is there in an overload and uh, it's very important for students to be able to understand what sort of information they work on, what sort of knowledge they go after. Because everything is available at the fingertip. What's the difficult choice is students do not understand how to use their time or rather we need to more importantly guide them on using their time so that they don't end up being too much on the mobile devices and uh, they understand that building social skills is not about using uh, Twitter or using WhatsApp or any other uh, platforms but social skills are ultimately when you meet people, when you understand their experiences, when you share your journeys and that's how social skills are built. And I think that empathy that comes out of that experience is also very important. So I would say that today the young generation needs to be sure that knowledge is available. But what they need to understand is how do they balance their time between their 
life duties, between their learnings and knowledge duties, and also keeping that sacred time available to go and hang out with your friends and understand their, their journeys. And in your college, in your universities, you will understand and you will gain more knowledge about what, what has worked for other people, what has not worked. And there's always a golden saying, understand what has not worked, but that's more valuable than just knowing what has worked. Yeah, and what I would like to for you to add at the end, which was what I was meaning to ask is, when did you start your foundation, where you are, where you're today, and the next five years? Uh, we started the foundation 22 years back. Uh, today, uh, we started with one school in Singapore, and uh, word of mouth took us to many countries, such as Malaysia and Japan, where we set up schools for the local nationals in Malaysia and Japan. Uh, today we have uh, 65 international campuses, international schools uh, across 11 countries and we are presently educating about 45,000 students. And what, where do you see yourself in the next five years? Well, I think next five years... What are your priorities? I think our priorities are to build good quality schools. Our priorities are not to build hundreds of thousands of schools. Our priorities are build a good quality school that will make a big difference to the students and I think that's where we are working on uh, to build the, we've already built the smart schools, uh, we have those smart schools live in Singapore and uh, we say Singapore is a smart nation and we have a smart school which has been also featured by the National Geographic Channel and we believe the next generation of schools will be the future schools and where there's going to be a lot more emphasis on soft skills, experiential journeys, uh, social skills and uh, that is what we're looking forward to. And so you've been coming to harass us for quite a few years and uh, it seems now you're becoming a constant so what is it that drives you to actually visit and this time it's Adelaide which is very far away but what drives you and what are your key take back and that would be? I think harasses is a forum where there has been a great meeting of minds uh, amazing ideas and experiences that you get to know and uh, also it gives you a chance to you know catch up with your old friends at Horaces and be able to share what you have learned and what you have been able to do with other people other members of the society uh, and I think that share and uh, learn is, is the primary objective of being in Horaces. Great that was really nice having you here and do enjoy the rest of the conference thank you Mr. Thank you, thank you so much for having me.